we are back what's up everybody so I am currently doing the damn thing so since the last update we have done a lot of damage and when I say a lot I mean a shitload so uh, as you can see we've been expanding we've basically taken over Egypt we have both the kingdoms of Nubia and Abyssinia under our control all of that has been passed out to my heirs so all of that all of the territories uh, are owned by Dogans uh, the way that I do it is that I give the cities and the um, whatever you call those like the the smaller units to the children of the children uh, once they come of age uh, and then the fathers I usually give them the counties and then I make their sons report to them uh, or and then as far as the kingdoms for example the kingdom of Nubia uh, the kingdom of Abyssinia and then the kingdom of Egypt I pass those out to my sons uh, so that way we can keep uh, the kingdoms within the first family so to speak even though it's all Dogen I think that the kingdom should pass on to my heirs since I'm from the direct like it's like your direct descendants should get the most important ones uh, interesting story when my when uh, when I was attacking kingdom of Abyssinia I ended up having to go into Aden which is that small island down there at the very tip on the other side uh, of where I am when I attacked them uh, and uh, did the siege I got a lot of prisoners one of the prisoners was a three-year-old girl uh, and she had both the Maid and the, uh, the Said and the Mirza traits uh, one of her parents uh, was a, a descendant from Muhammad and the other a descendant from one of his uncles or so, however that goes uh, so instead of killing her what I ended up doing was educating her which was really interesting I didn't even know you could do that so I educated her she ended up becoming not only Nubian but Jewish so when she became of age I released her uh, and then I recall oh, and then like during that time I had been uh, building up the di di diplomatic relations uh, and then I ended up marrying her off to one of my sons it was awesome I didn't even I, knew, I didn't like I really wasn't sure if it was like civilization where you can improve your culture to the point to where other people will want to join you and it doesn't really work like that as far as I can tell but this is a very very nice way to get other cultures into yours you know so if you go to war you do a siege let's say you get 10 or 15 prisoners of those 10 or 15 prisoners uh, if you have any children you can kill them and that'll kill off the line or you can keep them in your court make sure that you move them to house arrest and sometimes they will try to escape but I've never had one actually do it while you're educating them once they come of age then you can in turn marry them off into someone in your family if it's a boy uh, automatically she's going to take your name and your line if it's a woman sometimes you get lucky and they will allow you to do a matrilineal uh, marriage meaning that that Dogen name or your name will continue even if it's a female so it's really really interesting the uh, the game mechanics uh, th you learn them as you kind of go uh, and you know it, it, it kind of works together where the end goal uh, is to continue your line but there's a lot of different ways to do that uh, so there you go we have the kingdom of Nubia kingdom of Abyssinia the duchy of Nobatia uh, which is our home base uh, the duchy of Alexandria the uh, duchy obviously our home county uh, and then a couple of more so uh, the, w basically what we're doing now is we're consolidating uh, we're making sure that as we continue our push that we have enough uh, manpower uh, enough supplies enough money 
and that our foundation is built up uh, on a, you know really really well so that way once we do start that big ass fight going into Jerusalem we won't have any problems it'll be a really smooth transition uh, and we can kind of go from there so we will no oh, shit god damn it I didn't mean to do that damn <laughs> oh shit damn I meant to tell him damn it see this is what you get when you're talking and playing at the same time so now I have to go and fight my kinsmen what I really was trying to do uh, and I wasn't really paying attention I, I was really trying to make him um, choose uh, I'm sorry end the plot uh, I was gonna give him some money and then make him end the plot uh, but I fucked up and I can't even I'm not surrendering because if I do that'll be a game over so I gotta take out my kinsmen but it's all good it's a it's a good practice fight and then uh, it also allows me to let them motherfuckers know that I don't play so we're gonna have to put our major battle on hold for now while we deal with this little fucking gnat down here in the south who pants got too big for his britches and now he thinks he's a shit so now I gotta put it on him to show him that he is shit and I'm the shit with a capital T so once we complete that uh, then we can go back uh, to making our plans now I think the easiest way to go about this is after I oh come on all right you bitch have your fun uh, I'll be there shortly to wipe your ass off the planet uh, I think the easiest way to go about this is to complete the push north take out uh, I think that's the Emirate of Damrietta uh, which is that top right corner uh, up there uh, before you cross over uh, I, I think that's Saudi Arabia uh, before you cross over right there at the top of Egypt it, it basically just closes the door on any any action going east or west by me putting myself in the middle one it, it's a little dangerous for me because it means I can get attacked by Muslims on either side but they don't want it with me because I can send who a shitload of troops north from all of my shit down south so it would be extremely difficult for anyone to come in and try to take my territory because they come in into the hornet's nest you know if you if you're crazy enough to start any shit down south in the southern tip of uh, my African territories you're gonna get fucked up not just from my troops but I have allies that I can't call to war but that will respond to any attacks on the homeland so and all of those dudes are well equipped with lots of armies and the majority of those are soldiers uh, this is the girl I was talking about I ended up marrying her off to my son uh, well my son's son Remember Solomon II passed away? His son was Milian Kunda. Uh, Milian Kunda passed away, him, his brother, and both of his sisters. So now we're on to a whole different generation uh, that, that we're going to have to. Um, wait, did that happen? Let me see. Yeah, he's, um, he's the son of Milian Kunda. So <clears throat> essentially, what, what's going to happen is if it hasn't already, is that he's going to I'm going to pass on everything to him I don't like his dad I don't like his brother so we're gonna allow him well actually it's already it's already happened no it hasn't no it hasn't let's see Wait, what's going on here okay that's his son so he's already had a kid and look at this very interesting he's already passed oh, well his mother passed on both traits uh, and then we have his little brother so we got Millie and Kunda and then we got this little fella and both of them uh, will be the ones who will continue the line uh, uh, I'm basically having to uh, skip over the other lines because they're all dead or they will be <clears throat> so I think that 
basically whenever you're playing this game you have to be very 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 careful about who you choose to marry not only because of religion not only because of culture but also because of the traits you have to really 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 take your time when you're choosing a mate because I've had a lot of games in because of a woman <laughs> and and it'll be something like one of my somebody on my court or maybe a king in, a, in another kingdom or another another um, another uh, uh, what do you call those guys count another count uh, that that's under me ends up fucking my wife and that fucking just sets me off so now I gotta imprison him for being a nasty bastard and then he gets mad and then he wants to raise his army so now and usually when that happens the game is really, really smart about attacking you when you're most weak. So what happens is you start this fight with this numbskull to imprison him, and then all of a sudden you got a revolt, and then maybe also you're getting attacked by Muslims. So now you're fighting a war on three fronts, all because you were mad that your nasty, slutty wife decided to fuck the neighbor. To stop all of those type of situations from happening, the best thing that you can do is to be careful with your wife's selection. Now, as you go on, you you know sometimes you, you you can't help it. I mean, you can invite as many women as you want to court, but if none of them have the qualities that, that you find important, and to me, I like shy and I like chast. Uh, and I don't like Deceitful. Uh, now, Deceitful is good if you're wanting to groom or build up a spy master, but it's not really good as far as uh, have as far as for the wife. So there's my brother. Uh, I fucked up, and I, I think it's the order in which you give the counties. Uh, I gave him a city first, and since that city was Republic, when I made him a duchy, when I gave him that duchy, it automatically made all of his territories republic uh, and what that does is it breaks it up into five great houses and those five great houses split uh, uh, rulership uh, by a special vote which is fucking stupid I really don't like that and I don't like the way that they can be my competition when I'm trying to build trade routes you know like for example they'll take over all of your fucking ports upgrade them to where you can't make a bigger uh, uh, a Silk Road trade thingy bigger than two and that's an issue you know because nobody get paid in my house but me so I think that might that might be a problem but for now we're gonna put that on the back burner we're going to finish up whooping this youngsters ass uh, and then we're gonna continue our push up north now, I think I need at least 50 to 100,000 troops before I'll be able to really, really start doing some damage. Because I know once I take Jerusalem, I can't stop there. I'm going to have to take the surrounding areas around it as well to make it safe. I mean, it's, it would be dumb if I just went up there right now and took Jerusalem because then I'll be attacked on all sides because no one else is Jewish up there. So I think the best course of action is slow and steady and just you just got to keep plugging away at it. You got you just got to keep working at it, keep plugging away, keep Im improving your your cities, keep upgrading uh, your, your um, <clears throat> everything that you can when you can. Money is always an issue in this game. It's always an issue. It's very, very difficult to make some serious coin, regardless of how many territories you have. Now, you can change the laws to help you out with that a little bit. You can make it to where they have to pay more taxes. But every time you increase the taxes, it increases the chances of something bad happening to your rulership. reason for that is the more angry or the angrier that your, your counts get, the higher chance that they'll start a new faction. Uh, they'll be screaming for independence you know or, or plotting against you to kill you or you, it's just so much of a hassle to where it's a fine line 
one thing that I think is very important is that you have to stop them before they start. You have to kill anybody who presents any type of threats to your crowning and you can't be uh, merciful about that. You can't release them from prison. You can't, you know, oh, no, no, he'll be fine. No, fuck that. You got to kill that motherfucker dead and execute anyone that's against you whether it's religious or if they've had the balls to try to buck you and start their own faction and you know go to war so i don't play with that shit i smash motherfuckers speaking of smashing we're gonna holler at you little bro because that that's that's gonna be a wrap on that <laughs> so uh we have uh the muslims are still up in the north but i've created a nice little barrier between them uh, the plan is to move into the, into the, uh, in going west, uh, and then I'll start pushing east like we were saying. The Abbasid family is fucking huge. And they always do this. They always consolidate all of those lands, and they make it extremely difficult to start pushing east. Uh, I can, I think right now I would be able to take over those counties to the west of me. Uh, but I think I think I'm going to wait. Again, I think the best course of action is being patient, not overextending yourself, not overextending your army, and not overextending your supplies. One fight at a time. Uh, let's see. Well, he's a dogan. What should I do with him? What to do? What to do? What to do? He is from. Oh, I remember you. Okay. All right. He was a good guy, and he was a part of my father's, either my father or my grandfather's legacy. So, I think we'll just uh, keep him in prison for now. Usually, I kill those type of people, but if, if the name means a lot. You know, if he, if he had been some nobody, then it would have been a lot different. But since he did come from a family that I brung into my kingdom... I think we'll let it live. We'll let him make it. So we'll end there for now. Just want to thank everybody for checking me out, uh, checking out the show. I really appreciate the hits. Uh, subscribe, like, and again, thanks a lot for checking me out. Peace.